Okay guys, this is review for chapter 14, potentiometry. So some may ask, what is potentiometry? Uh, potentiometry is the use of electrodes to measure voltages that provide chemical information. Uh, an example of this in real life is the Mars rover. Um, it was sent to Mars and there the chemical composition of salt leach from Mars soil were measured. Um, Potentiometry we use to measure features on Mars, such as conductivity, reduction, potential, redox, and reducible metals. There were 59 selective electrodes and 23 different electrochemical sensors. So there are two different types of electrodes. Um, the reference electrode, which is self-contained and has a constant potential, and the indicator electrode, which is immersed in an analyte solution, and uh, the potential changes in order to measure things. Both are connected by a salt bridge. Commonly used reference electrodes include the standard hydrogen electrode, the saturated calomel electrode, and the silver-silver chloride electrode. Um, the SHE is not actually used often because it is an ideal. Um, the activity would be 1, which means the pH would actually be 0, which isn't seen. Um, as a result, um, it's actually used in reference to the other two. The saturated calomel electrode it has an electric potential of plus 0 0.241 volts in reference to the SAG. And the silver-silver chloride electrode is um, plus 0 0.197 volts in reference to the SAG. Um, another electrode that can be used is a double junction electrode if you do not want the analyte and the electrode to have direct contact. Here's just a reiteration of the um, structures of the silver silver chloride and the calomel electrodes. And a reminder then that when the silver silver chloride electrode is set against SHE, the real potential is 0 0.197 volts. And when the uh, saturated calomel potential is set against SHE, um, it is 0 0.241 volts. Um, when it is not saturated, it's actually 0 0.268 volts. Um, when it's saturated, the Cl- minus doesn't actually change. The concentration of it does not actually change with evaporating liquid. Something that is useful to be able to do is to convert the voltages from one reference scale to another. Um, a couple steps that would help that would be to, one, identify the reference values, so the SHE, the, the silver-silver chloride, and the SCE. Um, from there, uh, it helps to convert to the SHE, and then from there you can convert to the desired scale. Um, an example of this would be reading negative 0.047 volts on the silver-silver chloride scale. And then to convert it to the SHE, um, you would subtract uh, 0 0.197 volts to get negative 0 0.244 volts. Um, then to get it to the CHE, you would add 0 0.241 volts to the negative 0 0.244 volts you have to get negative 0 0.003 volts. So some common indicator electrodes are the metal electrodes and the ion selective electrodes, ISE. Um, the metal electrodes are part of the redox, and they work best with large surface areas and when they are clean. There are two different types of metal electrodes. The inert metals, so the platinum, gold, or carbon, uh, they aren't part of the redox. They just conduct the electrons. And then there's the... Um, silver part of the redox that responds to silver plus halides and ions that react with silver plus. The ISEs are not part of the redox and they only respond to one ion. Um, the analyte bound to the ion selective membrane diffuses into the solution causing a charge separation which is the potential difference. So a silver electrode can be used to measure the concentration of silver plus ions as well as the concentration of halides. Um, so for measuring the concentration of silver plus, um, the fixed reference potential 
uh, of 0 0.241 volts is in place with the full reaction. From there, the indicator potential is read, and the Nernst equation is performed on this, which um, you subtract the fixed potential from it. This can then be plugged into the Nernst equation, and the concentration can be solved for. Uh, if you want to practice, you can try the example listed below. So as I mentioned before, the silver electrode can be used to measure a halide as well. Um, the KSB relates the concentration of silver plus to the halide concentration if there is a solid silver halide in the solution. So in this example, we'll use, um, we'll use some silver bromide. So if you can figure out the, the cell potential, um, you can use the example from the previous side uh, of 0 0.558 volts. You can then plug that into the Nernst equation. Um, and in this example, um, where the log of the concentration of the silver plus ion would be put, you can put KSP over uh, the bromide and solve for the concentration of this. So junction potentials are examples of a problem that can arise while using an electrode. It is caused by unequal mobility of different ions in a liquid-liquid interface. An example of this would be the diffusion of chlorine, which is faster than sodium plus, in a brine water mixture. Unknown junction potentials can result in a limitation of accuracy of the potentiometric measurements. Um, E-cell, therefore, is uncertain because the observed electric potential um, is equal to the electric potential of the cell and uh, added to the electric potential of the junction. There are various types of ion selective electrodes, ISEs. Um, glass membranes for H plus and some monovalent cations. Um, there are solid state electrodes, which are based on inorganic crystals or conductive polymers. An example of this is the fluoride ion electrode. Um, there's the liquid based electrode, uh, which uses a hydrophobic polymer membrane uh, saturated with hydrophobic liquid ion exchanger. The, there is a compound electrode which uses an analyte selective electrode enclosed by a membrane and that separates the analyte from other species or generates the analyte. Uh, you see this a lot with gases. And then there's quantitation, which uses a calibration curve or standard additions. There are various advantages and disadvantages of using an ion selective electrode. Um, advantages include having a wide range with linear response, um, it's non-destructive, it's non-contaminating, it has a short response time, and it's unaffected by color or turbidity. The disadvantage is the precision of this is equal to or less than 1% most times. The electrodes can be fouled by organic solutes. Certain ions interfere with or poison certain electrodes, and many electrodes have limited life and or are fragile. Now we will look at a couple different ion selective electrodes. The first one being the liquid based ion selective electrode. So the liquid based ISC uses a hydrophobic polymer membrane that is saturated with a hydrophobic liquid ion exchanger. The potential difference builds up between the inside and outside of the membrane depending on the concentration of the analyte. Only a little analyte goes into the analyte solution. This separation between the analyte and the hydrophobic anion which balances the charge causes a potential difference E. Um, as you can see, as the concentration of the analyte goes up on the outside of the membrane, the amount of diffusion decreases, and as a result, the electric potential also decreases. Another type of ISC is the solid state. Uh, in this case, we'll talk about the fluoride ion electrode. Uh, inorganic crystals act as a membrane, and the ion of interest moves through the crystal lattice by going to each vacant site. 
Um, you can actually look at figure 1420, see an example of that. Um, TISAB stands for Total Ionic Strength Adjustment Buffer, and it contains many things that actually keep this electrode under control. So the first one is it controls acetic acid and uh, some NaOH, which results in a pH of 5.5. Uh, this pH is actually low enough to keep the hydroxide ion from interfering with this. Um, high uh, sodium chloride keeps all of the standards and unknowns at a constant ionic strength, and sodium citrate uh, complexes with ions such as iron 3 plus that could actually in interfere with this measurement by binding with the F minus. Compound electrodes are often used with gases. An analyte selective electrode is enclosed by a membrane that separates the analyte from other species or ends up generating the analyte of interest. An example of this would be a carbon dioxide ion selective electrode. Uh, in this case, a glass pH electrode uh, would be wrapped in a CO2 permeable membrane. Uh, the carbon dioxide would then diffuse through the membrane and the pH all around this electrode would decrease. pH can also be measured using glass electrode. The pH sensitive glass surfaces form a hydrated gel in water which metal diffuses out of and H plus diffuses into. An ion exchange equilibrium occurs in which the cations in the glass are fully replaced by the H plus. The porous plug serves as a salt bridge. The ideal pH electrode potential changes by 59.16 millivolts for every pH unit change of analyte activity at 25 degrees Celsius. The voltage measurement with the electrode in each buffer is tested to make a calibration line using two or more buffers is essential as essential as a result. This is what's actually being calibrated. There are various causes of error in pH measurement. This includes the standards, junction potential, junction potential drift, sodium error, acid error, equilibrium time, hydration of glass, temperature, and cleaning. In order to prevent errors from stacking up, it's very beneficial to become familiar with these causes of error and ways to prevent them. Now that we re-familiarized ourselves with the ion selective electrodes, we can talk about using them to calculate the electric potential difference for them. Um, in order to do this, it is uh, good to know that this is the Nernst equation, only instead of n um, being the number of electrons transferred in a redox reaction, n is just the ion being measured. The selectivity coefficient gives the relative response of different selective electrodes to ions of the same charge. In order to calculate this, you divide the response to x or the other ion by the response to A or the ion of interest. A smaller selectivity coefficient means that th this is a more selective electrode. From here you can also calculate the response of an ion selective electrode. Uh, as from this the approximate error of competing ions can be calculated. So TSAP talked about earlier is used to keep from keep the activity from having huge changes. Um, even with this, though, there is a possibility that your matrix can change your activity. Um, in order to do this, you can use a standard addition in order to uh, quantify the changes. Um, if you look at the equation below, you can see that um, it's a standard addition equation but it is slightly different. Um, in order to properly measure, uh, you'll need to make a series of external standards or a calibration curve with the standard addition. 